Oh, you are. I, I am. It's a blog. <lacht> Hallo, liebste leise laute Menschen und herzlich willkommen zu einem Interview draußen vor dem Hyde Park. Und neben mir steht gerade ein Mensch, der mit, mit einem einzigen Song geschafft hat, innerhalb von 24 Stunden die Schallmauer von über einer Million Klicks zu durchbrechen. Und zwar Calvin Jones. Hi, how are you? Hey, good thanks. You alright? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for being here. My well, you've had an amazing ride over the past couple of months if you i don't know i don't i don't know any other way how to yeah. put it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty accurate yeah yeah um so i mean you you crossed the one million viewer li line within like 24 hours yeah that's so uh, so i wrote this song call you home i guess 18 months ago and i put it on youtube and then a buddy of mine saw the song and he put it on a, a really a blog a bigger website called reddit And because of that community of people, within you know eight or nine hours, the song went from like a thousand views to over a million views. And uh, yeah, I'm still riding that wave, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Call Your Home is the, the title of the song. Uh, I'd like to go towards the word home. What does home mean to you right now? It's, it's strange for somebody who wrote a song about home. It took me until maybe three weeks ago to really figure out what it is. Um, For the longest time, I thought it was like a place and it was just, you know, this place that you go to when you relax and you put everything. But I've kind of, being on the road for so long, I've come to realize it's just people, you know. It's my buddies, my friends, the people that I see every day. They've kind of become my home. So, yeah. Um, you're getting an incredible amount of attention right now. What does it feel like? <laughs> um, it's, the weirdest thing about it is that I haven't like started any promotion in England. Everything I've just done is in Germany so far. So I come here and I play shows, and it's like, oh, there's you know, you, you meet fans and you sign you know autographs and you take pictures. But then I go home and I have to go clean up because my mom says, oh, you got to do this, and, you, and I'm just kind of me. So mm -hmm. it's um yeah, it's cool because it's like I get to live this thing, and then I have to go, I get to go home and be me, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So. For those people who do not know your music, which I don't think exists in Germany right now, but <laughs> um, what's the essence of your music? Um, it's it's like super synthy jazz with like a lot of rap. No, it's not. Sorry, <laughs> it's like the furthest thing. It's um, I think it's like pop and blues. Um, like I think every type of pop music is always mixed in with something else. I think that's what makes it interesting. Like. Taylor Swift is like pop and country, or at least she was. Ed Sheeran is like pop and rap, you know. And I think my thing that grabbed me from when I was a kid was blues music. So that's what I try to kind of infuse into the music that I'm making. So yeah, pop and blues, I guess. I heard you say that you wanted to bring back pop. Like, what is that about? Yeah, see, that sounds a little... Okay, it sounds a bit big-headed, but I, I, what I was trying to say is, I guess, that I've always kind of appreciated pop music from a young age. I grew up listening to Michael Jackson. And to me, that was always what pop music was, you know? And then when it was, you know, when I turned 18, 19, it, it, it seemed like mu pop music now meant some kind of shitty manufactured crap. And I was like, no, that's not what pop music is, you know? Pop music is just popular music. So in a way, I'd love to try and bring back the original meaning of the word pop, you know, just like music that connects with a lot of people. You know, it doesn't have to be shitty music. Yeah. When you write your songs, like how much fiction and how much reality is in your oh, in your cool. lyrics? I like that question. Um, I want to say 100% real. I'm gonna say 95% completely real. I think it starts from all my songs at least start from something that's happened. You know, some girl broke my heart. You know, same old kind of boring story. Um, but mm -hmm. that's you know that's that's the real stuff. And then just being a writer and being a dramatic person you always kind of maybe add a little bit to the story in your own ears and then when you look back and you're like maybe maybe she wasn't that bad a person it was just me you know <laughs> so yeah i think 95 percent is like really just true um you're on tour with mark forster right now um and you're playing sold out shows like what does it yeah. feel like to be on stage in front of a yeah sold out crowd it's it's something that you you dream of for so long that when you do 
when you do like finally see it and you're actually there, it's heartbreaking both in a good and kind of bad way. It's heartbreaking in the sense that you're like, wow, I actually, I can't believe I actually got here. You know, I finally actually managed to stand in front of a sold out show and play some music. <laughs> and then at the same sense, it's kind of like, oh man, so what do I do now? It's like, this was the thing that I was dreaming about for 20 years. Okay, so what do I do? And you just keep doing it. That's the kind of the secret is you do it every single night and as many times as you can do it. So, yeah. Cool. Um, let's take a step back. Like, When did you actually start making music or playing music? Um, I think the question is, when did my noise turn into music? Because <laughs> I think I was one of those kids who was always kind of just singing all the time. Mm -hmm. Even like when you're like, please just shut up. I'll just keep on singing. And then I really, I picked up the guitar about five years ago. So I guess some point within the last five years is when it turned into what I call music now, I guess. Yeah. One last question, uh, two last questions, actually. Um, my blog is called Lies Aloud, which means quiet and noisy. Okay, cool. And uh, I'd like to know, what's your most favorite quiet moment on a touring day? And what's your least favorite noisy moment of a touring day? All right, I've got, I've got a good answer to both of those. My favorite quiet moment is usually um, at like six in the morning, if I wake up like early just because I'm on a bus and I start reading, I just got like Sherlock Holmes like on my phone, some books and I just read and I open the um, little window and I look outside and I can see like, wow, we're in a new city. It's kind of like a very surreal thing to wake up whilst you're moving. Um, so that's usually my favorite. And then my least favorite loud moment is the first time that we hear sound check like rehearsal because it's so loud and you've had like eight hours of just like peace and quiet and then it's suddenly like dun 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 dun. Oh. And it's a little bit like kind of wake up kind of thing. But by the time that, you know, end of the night, you're really into it. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much for your, your openness and your time. And, um, well, that's about this interview mit Kevin Jones. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for having me. And I'm um, looking forward to your show later on tonight. Cool. Yeah. Und wir sehen uns das nächste Mal wieder mit einem anderen Interview oder bei uns im Adventskalender. Bis bald. Ciao.